Good morning. It's good to see each and every one of you here this morning as we, uh, today we celebrate the Reformation, which Reformation Day is tomorrow. Um, we're going to focus on our gospel reading, which I think is a perfect reading for Reformation Sunday, and that is the story of Zacchaeus. And we begin because we have a baptism this morning with a baptismal hymn, hymn number 592, Dearest Jesus, We Are Here. We turn to page 268 for the order of holy baptism. Please stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dearly beloved, Christ our Lord says in the last chapter of Matthew, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. In the last chapter of Mark, our Lord promised, whoever believes and is baptized will be saved. And the Apostle Peter has written, Baptism now saves you. The Word of God also teaches that we are all conceived and born sinful and are under the power of the devil, until Christ claims us as his own. We will be lost forever unless delivered from sin, death, and everlasting condemnation. But the Father of all mercy and grace has sent his Son, Jesus Christ, who atoned for the sin of the whole world, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. How are you to be named? 
Gracelyn Marie Roller. Receive the sign of the cross both upon your forehead and upon your heart to mark you as one redeemed by Christ the crucified. Let us pray. Almighty and eternal God, according to your strict judgment, you condemned the unbelieving world through the flood. Yet according to your great mercy, you preserved believing Noah and his family, eight souls in all. You drowned hard-hearted Pharaoh and all his hosts in the Red Sea, yet led your people Israel through the water on dry ground, foreshadowing this washing of your holy baptism. Through the baptism in the Jordan of your beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, you sanctified and instituted all waters to be a blessed flood and a lavish washing away of sin. We pray that you would behold Gracelyn according to your boundless mercy and bless her with true faith in the, by the Holy Spirit that through this saving flood all sin in her, which has been inherited from Adam and which she herself has committed since, would be drowned and die. Grant that she be kept safe and secure in the holy ark of the holy Christian church being separated from the multitude of unbelievers and serving your name at all times with a fervent spirit and a joyful hope, so that with all believers in your promise, she would be declared worthy of eternal life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. From ancient times, the church has observed the custom of appointing sponsors for baptismal candidates and catechumens. In the Evangelical Lutheran Church, sponsors are to confess the faith expressed in the Apostles' Creed and taught in the small catechism. They are, whenever possible, to witness the baptism of those they sponsor. They are to pray for them, support them in their ongoing instruction and nurture in the Christian faith, and encourage them toward the faithful reception of the Lord's Supper. They are, at all times, to be examples to them of the holy life of faith in Christ and love for the neighbor. Is it your intention to serve Gracelyn as sponsors in the Christian faith? God enable you both to will and to do this faithful and loving work, and with his grace fulfill what we are unable to do. Amen. Hear the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark. They brought young children to Jesus that he might touch them, but the disciples rebuked those who brought them. But when Jesus saw it, he was greatly displeased and said to them, Let the little children come to me, and do not forbid them, for of such is the kingdom of God. Assuredly, I say to you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God as a little child will by no means enter it. And he took them up in his arms, put his hands on them, and blessed them. This is the word of the Lord. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord preserve your coming in and your going out from this time forth and even forevermore. Amen. Congregation may be seated. Although Grace Lynn cannot uh, answer these questions for herself, although she may try, um, we as the body of Christ will answer them for her. Do you renounce the devil? Hold on, let's go people. Are we renouncing the devil or are we not? Let's try this again. Do you renounce the devil? Yes, I renounce him. Do you renounce all his works? Yes, I renounce him. Do you renounce all his ways? Yes, I renounce him. Do you believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth? Yes, I believe. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting? Yes, Grace, do you desire to be baptized? Yes, I do. Grace, Lynn Marie Roller, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
The Almighty God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given you the new birth of water and of the Spirit, and has forgiven you all your sins, strengthen you with his grace to life everlasting. Amen. Receive this light, this burning light, to show that you receive Christ, who is the light of the world. Live always in the light of Christ, and be ever watchful for his coming, that you may meet him with joy and enter with him into the marriage feast of the Lamb and his kingdom, which shall have no end. In holy baptism, God the Father has made you a member of his Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, and an heir with us of all the treasures of heaven in the one holy Christian apostolic church. We receive you in Jesus' name as our sister in Christ, that together we might hear his word, receive his gifts, and proclaim the praises of him who called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. Amen. We welcome you in the name of the Lord. Please stand. Let us pray. Almighty and most merciful God and Father, we thank and praise you that you graciously preserved and enlarged your family and have granted Gracelyn the new birth and holy baptism and made her a member of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, and an heir of your heavenly kingdom. We humbly implore you that as she has now become your child, you would keep her in her baptismal grace, that according to your good pleasure, she may faithfully grow to lead a godly life to the praise and honor of your holy name. And finally, with all your saints, obtain the promised inheritance in heaven, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Peace be with you. Amen. Congregation may be seated. You can pull that out. Baptismal certificate. Okay. Please uh, return to your seats. Hey, Grant, can you come up here quick? We will now have our younger kids come forward, right?
Have a seat there. Have a seat. Have a seat. Have a seat. I want to invite all my friends forward. Come on up. Yep, come on up, Larry. Well, good morning, boys and girls. Is that all the louder you can be? Let's try this again. Good morning. Good morning. All right. Has anyone here ever made a mess? Anyone here ever made a mess? Hey, if you tell me no, I'm going to ask your parents back here if they can agree with that. Yeah. yeah. All right. Ethan's got both hands up. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Maybe you have a messy room. Maybe you spilled something. I know I, I've made plenty of messes. But when you make a mess, what should you do? Clean it up. Clean it up. Right? We should make clean up messes when we make them. But what do you call it when you make a mess that you can't clean up? What is a mess that remains after you clean it up? Go ahead. Not a sin. A s Go ahead, Dominic. A stain. That's right. A stain. A stain is something that is permanent. A mess we can't remove perfectly. A mark reminding us that we made a mess. That we made a mistake. That we couldn't clean it up perfectly. And that's what sin is before God. It's a stain. It's a mess we can't clean up. And they often leave marks on other people. But God promises that he will clean up our sins. He will remove each stain. In Isaiah, he says, Though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they are red like crimson, they shall become like wool. Our sins make many things dirty. But God promises to clean all of our sins. He uses his Jesus' blood shed on the cross. So instead of people seeing the mistakes you made and the stains in your life, you can be seen as the child of God you are. Let us pray. Lord God, thank you for sending Jesus to clean up all of our sinful messes. Thank you for making us your child through our faith in Jesus. In his name we pray. Amen. All right, thanks, boys and girls. You can return to your seats, or you can follow Mr. Anneker to Kids Church. We continue our worship by singing our next hymn, hymn 656, A Mighty Fortress is Our God. Please stand.
please be seated. Our Old Testament reading for the observation of the Reformation comes to us from the prophet Isaiah, the first chapter, verses 10 through 18, found beginning on page 720. And our text from Isaiah comes out with harsh words for God's people. He calls them Sodom and Gomorrah. God uses this message to remind his people the works they are supposed to be doing, but that God also has the power to wipe away all their sins. Isaiah proclaims, Hear the word of the Lord, you rulers of Sodom. Give ear to the teaching of our God, you people of Gomorrah. What to me is the multitude of your sacrifices, says the Lord? I have had enough of burnt offerings of rams and the fat of well-fed beasts. I do not delight in the blood of bulls or of lambs or of goats. When you come to appear before me, who has required of you this trampling of my courts? Bring no more vain offerings. Incense is an abomination to me. New moon and Sabbath and the calling of convocations. I cannot endure iniquity in solemn assembly. Your new moons and your appointed feasts my soul hates. They have become a burden to me. I am weary of bearing them. When you spread out your hands, I will hide my eyes from you. Even though you make many prayers, I will not listen. Your hands are full of blood. Wash yourselves. Make yourselves clean. Remove the evil of your deeds from before my eyes. Cease to do evil. Learn to do good. Seek justice. Correct oppression. Bring justice to the fatherless. Plead the widow's cause. Come now. Let us reason together, says the Lord. Though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they are red like crimson, they shall become like wool. This is the word of the Lord. Our epistle reading comes to us from the first chapter of 2 Thessalonians, uh, verses 1 through 12, on page 1267. And this text is the opening words of Paul's second epistle to the Thessalonian church. He understands that they are going through some suffering for the sake of the gospel, but he reminds them that their suffering is temporary. Paul writes, Paul, Silvanus, and Timothy... To the church of the Thessalonians, in God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. We ought always to give thanks to our God for you, brothers, as is right, because your faith is growing abundantly, and the love of every one of you for one another is increasing. Therefore we ourselves boast about you in the churches of God for your steadfastness and faith in all your persecutions and in the afflictions that you are enduring. This is evidence of the righteous judgment of God, that you may be considered worthy of the kingdom of God, for which you are also suffering. Since indeed God considers it just to repay with affliction those who afflict you, and to grant relief to you who are afflicted, as well as to us, when the Lord Jesus is revealed from heaven with his mighty angels in flaming fire, inflicting vengeance on those who do not know God, and on those who do not obey the gospel of our Lord Jesus. They will suffer the punishment of eternal destruction, away from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his might, when he comes on that day to be glorified in his saints and to be marveled at among all who have believed, because our testimony to you was believed. To this end we always pray for you, that our God may make you worthy of his calling and may fulfill every resolve for good and every work of faith by his power, so that the name of our Lord Jesus may be glorified in you and you in him, according to the grace of our God, and the Lord Jesus Christ. This is the word of the Lord. Please stand for the gospel reading. And the Holy Gospel is according to St. Luke, the 19th chapter, the first 10 verses on page 1123. And it is the story of Zacchaeus, a wee little man who climbed up into a sycamore tree. Although he should have been the last person Jesus visits, he becomes the first because Jesus came to seek and to save the lost. We read. He entered Jericho and was passing through, and there was a man named Zacchaeus. He was a chief tax collector and was rich, and he was seeking to see who Jesus was. But on account of the crowd, he could not, because he was small of stature. So he ran on ahead and climbed up into a sycamore tree to see him, for he was about to pass that way. 
And when Jesus came to the place, he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, hurry and come down, for I must stay at your house today. So he hurried and came down and received him joyfully. And when they saw it, they all grumbled. He's gone in to be the guest of a man who is a sinner. And Zacchaeus stood and said to the Lord, Behold, Lord, the half of my goods I give to the poor, and if I've defrauded anyone of anything, I restore it fourfold. And Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house, since he also is a son of Abraham. For the Son of Man came to seek and to save the lost. This is the word of the Lord. We continue with him 611, Chief of Sinners Though I Be. Please be seated. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. At a high school girls practice one, Sunday af one sunny afternoon, the coach began practice by yelling to the girls, partner up! And the girls immediately begin finding their partners. Except today was different. It became tricky. One girl, Jessica, had already agreed to be a partner with Susie, but Natalie didn't know that Jessica already had a partner. Now this doesn't sound like a big deal, except that Susie and Natalie weren't friends. Well, they could be teammates, but they could never be friends. 
Poor Jessica had no idea about this. In fact, Jessica found out the hard way that there was a hard divide on this team. When Jessica told Natalie that she already had a partner and it was Susie, Natalie turned around to her side of friends and said, Well, Jessica isn't with us anymore. And that was that. By choosing the wrong partner for the beginning of practice, Jessica was no longer their friends anymore because she had crossed the line and she became one of them over there. At least that's what Natalie told Jessica the next day, right before she refused to talk to her anymore. And I wonder if that isn't what all the complaining was about in Luke 19, when Jesus goes to Zacchaeus' house. When Zacchaeus climbed that sycamore tree to see Jesus, and Jesus said, Zacchaeus, come down. I'm going to your house today. The religious leaders and those who were on the other side, the people who didn't want to associate with people like Zacchaeus, all probably had the same idea as Natalie. He's gone in to be the guest of a man who is a sinner. He's changing teams. He's crossing the fence line. He's becoming one of them. And if you look a little closer at our text, maybe they have a point. In verse 2, Luke describes Zacchaeus as a chief tax collector and rich. Rich might not be, might not be strong enough he was extremely wealthy. And that should catch us a little off guard. Jesus is the one who warned us about people who were lovers of money. right? Jesus taught you can't serve God and money. Jesus has even criticized the Pharisees for being lovers of money. But now, an extremely rich man has climbed a tree and Jesus goes to his house? Is Jesus trading sides? Isn't he crossing another fence line? Maybe he's even crossing the line of his own teachings. Yet we know the truth. We believe that this is why Jesus came into the world in the first place. So that he could eat with sinners and tax collectors. So he could eat and drink with the worst of the worst. The lowest of the lowest the scummiest of the scum. We can't say Jesus didn't come to this earth to make friends because Jesus did come to make friends. But he made friends with the wrong people. He made friends with the ones that were in low places. But now also he made friends with those who were in high places as well. And of course this means that Jesus came to be your friend. Now, some of you might say to yourself, yep, I'm one of Jesus' friends in low places, and I'm proud of it. But I'm not sure you should be proud of being in a low place, especially when that place is because of sin, whether it's gambling or drugs or abuse or lying or stealing or cheating, and on and on it goes. This isn't the message for you if you think you can stay in your low place of sinfulness because Jesus is now your friend. Zacchaeus says he's going to stop his stealing. He's going to repay back anyone he's done wrong. He not only believes, but he shows fruits of repentance and his faith. For those of you who think differently, I'm not one of those friends in low places. I'm one who conducts myself with the utmost decor. Zacchaeus was one of these people. He was a man of society and high living. And you might think to yourself, I'm prim and proper. I'm respectable. I have a good reputation to uphold. You just might look down your noses at those lower people. Well, this story is for you too. For those are the attitudes Jesus came to shatter. He came to bring down the high and mighty. He came to show them the truth of the gospel that that all need Jesus. Not just those on the other side of the fence. Once upon a time, there was a friar. A well-learned friar who had a PhD in Old Testament exegesis. 
He was a learned and well-respected man. This friar had quite the story about how he became a friar. He was studying to be a lawyer when he got caught in a terrible thunderstorm. He promised he would serve God and change his career choices if he would be spared. The storm ended. He arrived to his destination safely. And now it was time to enroll in a different line of work. He joined a religious order and began learning. Yet no matter how high he would climb up in his Augustinian order, he was always being dragged down. He was being dragged down by his sins. Every single one of them. He couldn't escape his sinful self. He couldn't confess them fast enough. He couldn't make penance soon enough before he had sinned again. He was a mess. And there was no way out of this vicious cycle for him. Until one day his father confessor invites him to read the New Testament so that this friar could see the whole truth. That Jesus came for sinners like him. Even as society propped him up as someone to be admired, Jesus knew the truth and still came to forgive him. Hopefully by now you've figured out I'm talking about that friar was named Martin Luther, who would eventually lead the Reformation, and we are here today because of the work of Luther. Yet the most important part of that story is that Jesus found him when he was reading the New Testament. In studying God's word, Jesus claimed this Augustinian friar to be his child. Luther, like Zacchaeus, became a son of Abraham. And that's the goal of the church today, to make people sons of Abraham, to be a place where Jesus seeks and saves the lost. After all, Jesus was the one who crossed the fence line. He was the one who ate and drank with sinners. He was the one who became human like you. He was the one who came to be with you. He sought you out no matter how high or how low you think you are in this world. He joined you right where you are and is saying to you, I've come for you. And we see this truth in the cross. When God in human flesh dies, just as every other human dies, so does Jesus. But with a better end result, three days later, he rose from the dead. Jesus even crossed the fence line of death for you, and he still came out alive. He sought you out no matter what the cost, because he wants to eat and drink with you. And that's the good news for each of you. Jesus sought you out. Salvation has come to your house. And one day, you will be in Jesus' heavenly house, eating and drinking with him. And you will have crossed that holy fence. But no one will ever question why. In the name of Jesus, amen. We now continue our worship by singing our canticle, hymn number 941, We Praise You and Acknowledge You, O God.
We continue with our offering. We turn to page 227 for the order of prayer from the service of Matins. Please note that we have already prayed the Lord's Prayer, so in our order of prayer we will skip that part. Please stand. O Lord, hear my prayer. O Lord, stir up the hearts of your faithful people to welcome and joyfully receive your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, that he may find in us a fit dwelling place, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Gracious God, you have renewed your church in every age with the voices of those who recall your people to the gospel and who speak your word in all circumstances. Receive our thanks for Martin Luther and those with him who contended for the gospel against many and great enemies. Make us bold that we would also contend for the faith against those who would silence our voices or distract your people from the one true gospel that crucified and risen Christ. Lord, in your mercy. O Lord, guard and defend us in your holy Christian church throughout the world, that we may be protected from the temptations of the devil, the world, and our own sinful nature. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, make us truly your disciples. Keep us in your word. Free us from all errors and make our homes and families peaceful. Preserve all fathers and encourage them for their godly task, that children would be brought up in the fear and instruction of the Lord. Lord, in your mercy. Have mercy on our nation. Give us good and faithful rulers who will govern after your good pleasure. Give us comfort and a right understanding of your rule in this world, that we would not be deceived to think earthly powers will last forever, but have confidence in you alone. We especially pray this day that you grant peace to the people of Ukraine and those affected by violence in our country and around the world. Lord, in your mercy. God of grace, do not let your people fear, though the earth gives way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea. Rescue all people in need, especially Jerry, Helen, Carol, Lynn, Helen, Rich, Linda, Annette, Chrissy, Shirley, Bridge, and Iona. And comfort them with the promise that you are with them. Lord, in your mercy. Blessed Father, you have granted us the privilege of being disciples of Jesus. We give you thanks for the baptism of Gracelyn. Guide all to the waters of holy baptism and help us to continue to learn and grow through our church and school. Lord, in your mercy. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, you have safely brought us to the beginning of this day. Defend us in the same with your mighty power and grant that this day we fall into no sin, 
neither run into any kind of dangers, but that all our doings be ordered by your governance may be righteous in your sight. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Let us bless the Lord. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And we remain standing for our closing hymn, 729, I am trusting thee, Lord Jesus. Well, it's good to see each and every one of you here this morning as we gather around God's Word and God's sacraments. Remember Grace Lynn, who's now back in the cry room, but I can see her um, through uh, the waters of holy baptism. And there, now Adam's holding her up. Yep. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so a couple of announcements. One, um, trunk and treat tomorrow, 5 to 6.30. You're all welcome to join us for that. Uh, and then the second, on, uh, on Saturday, November 5th, uh, we have a chili cook-off at 5 o'clock, and you're all welcome to join us. If you want to bring chili, that's great. If you don't want to bring chili, that's fine. We'll have chili for you to try out and eat. And we got three categories, red, spicy, and white. And you can sign up online, or you can sign up right out here outside the fellowship room on the window. Any other announcements? None? What? And the craft fair, that they'll hear about it for the next two weeks. So, yeah. All right. Uh, we'll conclude with the Bible verse of our month. For we hold that one is justified by faith apart from works of the law. God's blessings to you this week.